Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today we're going to be doing a little bit of a review for a receiver that I think could be the best receiver that you can put into an ant weight combat robot. So that receiver is this one, it is an FS2A receiver for FlySky uh, transmitters. Now just before we get going I will say that I have purchased this with my own money. I was put onto these receivers by a friend of mine I bought them with my own money. There is a link to these in the description down below, but it is not an affiliate link. Uh, everything I'm talking about here is literally just because I found these things uh, to be pretty awesome in actual fact and thought that you guys should know about it as well. Uh, so what makes these things so awesome? So first of all, they have an incredibly small form factor, which is really nice when trying to squeeze them into 150 gram ants. Uh, US ants, it's kind of a little bit less of an issue, but it's still nice to have such a tiny receiver. Uh, in this mode, set up as I have it in my hands right now, with nothing connected to it, it's about 0.9 grams. Uh, it kind of, kind of fluctuates between 0.9 and 1 gram, depending on uh, which scales you set it down on. It is also amazingly robust in terms of the voltage it can take. It can take 10 volts straight into it and run on 10 volts, no problem. That means that for a tiny little ant weight like this one, you don't need to have a beck in the ant weight at all, which means that you can use smaller and cheaper uh, ESCs for your robot, and you don't actually have to worry about having that beck, which kind of saves you even more weight on top of that. Now, I will say I have been running this uh, beckless in uh, this is a party, my vertical spinner, for three or four months now, uh, and so it's gone through, I don't know, probably an hour's worth of actual in the robot fight time, and it does not get hot to the touch or anything running backless on uh, 2S. So it's running at about 8 volts when you run it on 2S LiFos, and yeah, I've never, never had a problem with it. Um, I'm actually, one of the, the big reasons I'm making this video is not only have I had it running in my ant weights uh, and it makes for really quick and easy ant weight builds, but I've also run this one that you see with uh, plugs all over it. I've run this one in Annie Are You OK, my beetle weight, and also I ran it as the drive receiver in my featherweight for Australian Nationals, which means that this little receiver here has taken some massive hits, or at least the robot it has been in has taken some massive hits and it has survived. So let's take a look at some of the hits that this tiny little receiver has survived. Yeah, so there's some big collisions in that. I mean, I, I wouldn't expect a lot of electronics to uh, to fail under those conditions, but considering this thing is so small, and yeah, I would you know kind of assume that it would be a little bit fragile, um, but it survived really, really well. And yeah, I'm, I was, I'm pretty happy with it on the whole. There are a few minor downsides uh, that we're, we can go into right now. So this little receiver runs the, it's a HF2SA something. It's, um, I'll put it on the screen right now because I can't ever remember how, which words are in the right combination for it. So it runs this uh, protocol for, um, for submit, like transmitting data. And normally when you run, especially bigger receivers that run this same protocol, they run proper two-way communication with your transmitter. So when you power everything up, your transmitter receives a signal back from your receiver and it will tell you on the transmitter how much power the um, receiver is actually receiving, which is really nice because it means that you know that when you power up, every, you know everything's connected properly and it's all good. These little receivers don't seem to run the two-way version of this communications uh, scheme. So that means when you power one of these things up, it does not tell the transmitter how much power it's getting. And while the transmitter is able to send data to it, it's not sending data back. So the transmitter doesn't know if it's connected or not, which 
uh, kind of worried me a little bit when I first started using these because I like having the little battery indication pop up on my transmitter just so that I know that the transmitter and the receiver are linked properly. Um, the other thing too is that most receivers that use this style of communication have uh, fail safe set by the transmitter. So you go through menus on your transmitter and I'll probably do a video on how to do this at some point. You go through your menus on your transmitter and you set your fail safes through the menu and that gets piped down to the receiver and it sets up correctly. Now, these little receivers don't do that. Instead, uh, they have a little, tiny little button here, which is the bind and uh, fail safe button. So, you use this button to bind the receiver to your uh, transmitter the first time, just like you would use a bind plug on a regular receiver, but also it's the way you set the fail safe. So, the way you set fail safe with this is you power everything up and then set your transmitter to where the fail safe needs to be and then sit and hold that button for a few seconds until the light starts flashing. Once the light starts flashing, then it means that the fail safe has been set. So this is okay, but it means that if you jam this into a robot without uh, thinking about it, you could potentially reset your fail safe halfway through a match. So what I have done for the ones that are jammed into ant weights is I have put a huge amount of hot glue over this button so that that button is held up and can't ever be pushed back down again. But this guy that has been in beetle weights and feather weights, I've actually been wrapping tape around the whole thing so that that button can't be pressed and actually applying a little a sliver of foam across the top of the receiver and then wrapping it in tape. Just, yeah, to keep it electrically isolated and also making sure that that button cannot be pressed. Um, yeah, so there you go. That's, that's the good and the bad for this little receiver. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this and uh, pretty impressed by how well it has gone in all of my robots so far. It's taken some big hits, or at least the robots it's been in have taken some big hits, and it has survived without any real issue. So I'm, yeah, pretty happy with it. Like I said, and that's why I'm kind of showing you guys this as well, just as a quick like, hey look, you can, you can buy a receiver like this that is really small and really quite robust. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed that one. I hope this helps a couple of you out there um, with your ant weight builds. And as I said, there will be a link in the description to where I got mine from. Once again, it is not an affiliate link. Uh, I'm just showing this to you guys because I think it's going to help some of you out. Um, yeah, so there you go. I hope you enjoyed that one and I will see you in the next video.